Hi folks, in this video we're going to be enabling port security on a Cisco switch interface and exploring the different options that are available. Jumping right into it, we're going to need a Cisco switch on the board as well as two end devices. We're just going to use the VPCS option for this lab. Okay. And enable them and open up a console. There we go. Wire them up. Okay. So we'll start by configuring them with an IP address. PC1 is going to be 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 with the slash 24 IP address. PC2 is going to be similar. It's going to be 10.1.1.2 the slash 24. And we're going to do a quick ping just to make sure they can talk to each other. Whoops. Cancel that. Okay, try that again. Ping 10.1.1.1, and we got a response, okay. All right, at this point, the plan is we're just going to enable port security on E00 for PC1, and then we're gonna leave port, uh, port security on this interface disabled. And effectively, PC2 is just gonna be the PC we're gonna ping to for testing. Okay. So to get started on switch one, we're going to type in the command show port security interface E00, and this will show the default settings for port security out of the box. This is specifically on this interface, but it would apply to all interfaces by default. So port security is currently disabled. The violation mode is to shut down the interface. So if it encounters a violation, it'll just shut it down. And the maximum number of IP addresses is one by default. But again, none of these settings would apply unless we actually enabled it. So we'll do that now. So we're gonna go into configure terminal interface E00. I'm gonna type in switch port mode access, switch port, Ports, whoop, let me type right. Switchboard, port security, and these are the options we have available. Now with port security, we actually have to enter this command on its own, so just switch port, port security to enable it. And to show that that did in fact enable it, we're gonna type in do show port security interface E00. We can now see that port security is enabled. But going back to the previous command, switch port port security, we're going to hit the question mark, and this will show the different options that are available. Okay. So for the MAC address, we're going to type in MAC address, and this gives us a couple of options we can do. We can either manually set the MAC address, and this will be on PC1. So if we type in show IP, it will show the MAC address here. And that'll work just fine if we just copy it, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use the sticky option. Now what the sticky option does, if we set uh, port security for sticky, the first packet it receives on the interface, it's gonna look at the source MAC address. And the source MAC address is gonna be right here. And it's gonna add that as the port security MAC address. Okay, now if we type in do show port security interface E00, it'll show that currently uh, number of Mac, a sticky number of MAC addresses is zero, but that's just because it hasn't received any traffic just yet. So we're going to go ahead and ping 10.1.1.2, so basically PC1 ping PC2. So it's going to receive a packet with the source MAC address here, and it should add it to the table. 
Okay. Now if we type in do show Mac address dash table, it'll show that there's now a static entry for E00. And as we can see, let's see, 6801 should match. I'm talking the last four digits. Yeah, we can see it here. 6801, so there it is. Okay, now we can see the last source address is added here on VLAN 1. And this whole lab is just going to be on VLAN 1, which is native, so it's all going to be untagged traffic. But anyway, we can see it's added the counter here. It's got sticky MAC address. It's got 1. We're going to leave the default number of MAC addresses to 1. But next thing we're going to discuss are the violation modes. So if we type in switch port, port security violation, we'll see some violation modes here. So the shutdown mode is actually default, as we saw earlier. And what the shutdown mode does, if it, in this case, if it gets more than one MAC address on the interface, it'll put it into an error disable state, which effectively shuts down the interface. The restrict option will essentially, it will only allow traffic from uh, the MAC address that's in the MAC table that's allowed. Um, that being the, the MAC address specifically from PC1. So if there's another PC over here with a different MAC address, the switch will just block that MAC address, but still allow traffic from PC1. We'll be demonstrating that here in a minute. So that's the restrict option. The only th difference between restrict and protect is the violation counter. Now I can show you the violation counter here using the do show port security interface which we've entered before now the violation counter shows up here secure so with restrict mode if there's a violation it will add um, the number of violations or the number of times that's occurred right here if we set it to protect mode it will not this will stay as zero okay but just to demonstrate port security in action we've enabled port security on E00. It's set only to use one MAC address, so what we can do... ...to demonstrate this. Uh, for now, we're just going to remove this link. Delete. And we're going to drop in a second switch here. This will be our... Uh, the switch that will allow us to connect a second device right here. Okay. I'll just do it like this. Alright. And of course, you have to give this an IP address, so... This will be IP 10.1.1.3 for PC3. And because this is its own switch, we can actually ping PC1 at this point. Hmm. There we go. So it's pinging it successfully. Okay, so at this point, we're going to wire these. And this is going to connect to E00, which is the interface that's port security enabled. Now, as I said before, currently it's set to a shutdown state. E00 is set to uh, the violation mode is shut down. So if it, it's a switch one encounters something that would uh, essentially, if PC3 tries to ping anything outside, well, let's say it tries to ping PC2, it should enable the, the violation mode. So we're going to go over to PC3, we're going to ping 10.1.1.2, so effectively just pinging through that route. And we'll notice it's not going to be successful. This is not reachable. So if we go over to switch 1, we'll notice that it just switched to a down state. Okay, interface E00, change state to down. Okay, and if you want to check that, another way you can type in sh uh, show interface E00. And we'll scroll up here. Ethernet E00 is down. Line protocol is error disabled. Now to fix that, one thing we can do... Well, first we need to uh, fix the situation that 
started the error to stable state in the first place. So we're going to remove the link there and there. We're going to get these out of the way. We're going to use them later, but we're going to fix this really quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. I'm going to reconnect it like I was before. Okay. Now, in this case, we have fixed it to where only the correct MAC address is showing up on this interface, but it's still going to be in a error disabled state. So if we even check it, it's still going to show up in an error disabled. So we can fix this by going into global config mode, going to the interface. This will be interface E00. And we're going to do a shutdown, no shutdown. Uh, okay, and there it goes. So if we do it, check it again, show in E00, it'll show that it is now up and is up and running. And if we're going to test it, we can do ping 10.1.1.2. And whoops. We got to do it from PC1, of course, 10.1.1.2. And successful. Okay. Now, one thing we could do. Let's say we wanted to allow. If an interface goes into the error disable state. And we want to allow it to uh, give it a certain num amount of time. It'll stay in that error disable state before it gets turned back on again. There is an option to do that. Now, if we type in from global config mode. We're going to type in. Error disable recovery cause, and it gives some options here. Now, for port security, it's going to be the P secure violation option. Uh, P secure just stands for port security, and it says enable timer to recover from P secure violation error. Okay, now the show command we can use show. ERR disable recovery. This will show uh, the different things here. Now, for port security, it'll show up right here, and we can see it's in a disable state. But all of these uh, would apply in a similar way. We can see like ARP inspection up here, and it shows the amount of time. The time interval is 300 seconds, so I believe that's five minutes. 6, 12, 18, 20, 30. Yeah, five minutes. And it even shows this thing here for so for if there is an interface that's in an error disable state that's going to be turned back on, it'll be show up right there. Okay, but to enable that, we're going to type in er uh, error disable recovery. Whoops, we type it right. Cause and then p secure violation. Enter. And if we do show run pipe section, it'll show up there. Okay, now if we do the show command again, show ERR disable recovery, we can now see that P secure violation is enabled. So if an interface is put into an error disable state, uh, it will uh, be re-enabled after a certain amount of time, that being 300 seconds by default. Okay. Okay. I can test this out here. Alrighty. So we're going so to try this again. try and ping once more that shouldn't be successful yeah okay now by going back to switch one we type in show interface e00 it'll whoops let me type that right again it'll show that it's in an error disabled state but one thing I want to check go show err disable recovery Okay, and it shows the command we entered previously. So P secure violation is enabled. And if we scroll down here, it'll show interfaces that will be enabled at the next timeout.
and it shows here Ethernet 00, zero the error disable reason and then the amount of time it has left so that's pretty handy all right now next thing we're going to do is explore the other violation modes here we've got let's see interf interface e00 switch port port security violation okay now we've got the restrict and protect option i'm going to use the protect option first for the violation counter actually let me, let me check something let me get that okay do show port security and z00 okay and you can see here security violation count is currently set to zero so i just wanted to check that really quick all right so we're going to enable protect and we're going to do this one more time or a couple more times actually just to demonstrate so as i mentioned earlier with the protect option this means that it will not fill this counter if it encounters a violation um, all it's going to do is only allow traffic from this and then drop all other uh, packets from uh, any other mac address it's not allowed okay. All right. Now, once again, just to confirm what we just did, do show port security interface E00. You can see that the violation mode is now sent to uh, set to protect, so it should still allow traffic from PC1. So if I try to ping PC2. It goes through successfully, but if I go to PC3 and try to ping it, it should block it. Okay, now if we type in the same command, it will show that the security violation count is still set to zero. So all those violations just happened on PC3, but it didn't add it to the counter here. So what I'm going to try and do is do the same thing I did earlier except we're going to change the violation mode this time to restrict okay and we're basically going to do the same thing so PC1 should still be able to ping successfully to PC2 went through but PC3 should still not be able to okay now if we type in the same show command we can now see that there are now violations being counted okay and we can see it's in restrict mode okay and i'd say that pretty much does it for this video just going over some of the options that are available for port security if you found this video useful please like the video and thank you for watching